All right. I just recorded an intro, more or less, for the other side of things. I'm starting to split it up. I'm currently checking. It's an interesting kind of yellow and blue I've got going on here. I want. I thought blue because blue would uh, indicate how cold it is because it is very cold. Let's try to warm it up a little bit. Let's see what that does. I guess a white wouldn't work too bad. Well, if I'm gonna do that, then I don't need the color. Uh-oh. Let's see here. This is incredibly bright though. Turn on the brightness. I got recognized at work for my hard work, which means that they give me a little gift card. Um, which means that I bought another little light because I wanted one that could do color and also I thought a third one would be useful. And now I'm using all three. I've got one mounted on top of the camera so that one can stay there with all of the audio set up. I got one that I just set over here to provide some secondary light and a third one there. This is not, as far as I know, a more traditional light standard as far as I remember. I got to learn a little bit more about lighting techniques and things. Um, I do, I have read some and what I what I remember reading and, well, watching a video and learning about in different ways was a three light setup where you've got, what are the terms? You've got, mm, there's a fill light. Key light, fill light, background light. Or backlight. The principle behind that being that you get most of your, you put one more powerful, which I'm not doing right now, but you would put one more powerful light to one side on an angle um, to fill in the key, not fill, that's the wrong word to use. I also don't do a good job of instru instructing, explaining when I don't really know what I'm talking about a full amount, but basically powerful light from one way, less powerful light at the same angle there. So you get soft shadows on one side of the face and then the backlight. So you can get like the hair details and make it stand out a bit more. I'm not doing any of that. Um, I just have three lights pointed in different directions at varying power things. So I'll learn from this. But anyway, the point of it was the sun is starting to come up. So I got to hurry along here. Uh, last week or last two weeks ago, last week I edited it. I did a video that was longer and just talking, just a lot of talking. And I even cut it down. It was probably well over an hour before I started cutting stuff where I was like, this isn't necessary. This is probably boring. This is not useful. And I feel I have mixed emotions about that, obviously. Uh, I feel like it's important to talk and to be able to get it out. I don't want to restrict myself because then I'll start cutting out things that could be good before I even say them. So I think it's important for me to, uh, I think it's important for me to just be able to speak freely more or less and talk about whatever's on my mind without trying to worry about, uh, what's going to translate well. And that way I can edit it however I need to, but also being able to not make incredibly long videos that will probably be boring. So I'm just going to split it up. That's what I decided. I've tried it once before and I don't remember why I dropped doing that. Um, I should continue doing that. It's useful making. Here's the videos where I go out and I look at the wildlife and I show a whole lot and I do a whole lot. And then here are the videos where I'm talking and I just explain and they don't have to be related to wildlife. This can be anything. I can tell you about how I'm uh, past the fourth gym in playing the fourth generation of Pokemon uh, where I what did I do? I cured some Psyducks of their chronic headache. Until it comes back, I guess. Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to go see wildlife. I don't have a whole lot of time today to do that. But that is my idea is to start splitting them into two different videos. Because I do, I recognize that I don't want to compromise myself on what I'm making. But I do recognize that some things, people are going to be interested in more of one than the other. And that's fine to do that. I also had a lot of trouble with audio last time. Because I was trying to mess around with it and... I set up the two mics so I could easily switch between them where it was, here's the shotgun mic on top of the camera, uh, and here's the lapel mic that I'm wearing, and then I just muted one, um, and it turned out I muted the wrong one. So I did my best that I could, but it was in the car, and it was loud, and it was, you know, not good because the car already is noisy, and the road is noisy, and then everything's bumping around on dirt roads. I'm not going to mute both of them anymore. 
when I'm editing, all I need to do is switch from one to the other. I can go, hey, here's my left and right channel. I want both right, I want both left and right to be out of the left channel, and it just duplicates it, or vice versa. So then I've got lav or shotgun mic, depending on what it is. And I've looked at several upgrades that I could make so that I could record it separately. I can never take the chance of losing my audio. It will sound better rather than going into the camera to be recorded. Muddy. Later situation. Anyway, I gotta get going. I'm gonna have a protein bar and a banana, and I'm going to go see what I can see as far as wildlife before I run out of time today. All right. <laughs> Been out for a while now, uh, walking around, seeing some things here and there. Saw a robin, took some pictures of. Um, there was a magpie for a second and some northern flickers, but I haven't gotten a very good angle on one of them yet. I'm walking around the frozen lake, but there is a section behind me over there where it is not frozen, and there is a huge group, flock, of waterfowl. Golden, common, golden eyes, um, probably ducks and geese as well, but if they're so close to the edge of the water, I can't, I usually would walk over that way, but I can't get it, I'll just disturb all of them, they'll all fly away, so I'm not doing that. I'm gonna turn around and go back that way, see what else I can see. It's fine. Uh, I, whew, cold as usual. Such is winter, windy, cold, snow snowed a few days ago hasn't hasn't snowed that uh, much compared to last year but probably not a good comparison last year because broke one of the records for most snowfall so there either. Now where did I drop you? Did I leave you on the seat thinking that I would be warm enough to want to stand outside? Yeah I did. Okay there's my caps. A fine day out. Uh, I don't know looking back if there were any just spot on spectacular moments that I managed to capture. I missed a good bit of them unfortunately which you know learning. The uh, idea I had for my tripod did not work out. And I will go into that more because I think it's interesting enough and uh, I can do a far better job explaining when I actually have the material to demonstrate. Is this camera up a little bit? You can't quite see my face. You see more of what I'm doing. All right, you go down there. You go over here. I get a drink of water. We raise that up. It's gonna fall anyway because it's just some suction cups. Attach the window and gravity. So, yes, I saw a decent amount of birds. I went, I couldn't get quite to the uh, same place that I usually go. Um, 
where I went. Uh, when I've come here before, I've gone around one lake. There's kind of multiple lakes here um, because they are divided by last by uh, land in between them. And I walked down in between two lakes, so I kind of got something on either side. Um, or, I'm sorry, you can go that way. I did not go that way because right as I got here, there was a man walking his dog who was nice and talked to me about getting a beautiful photo the other day where uh, it was just after it snowed. So the sun rises and it's shining on all the trees that are here and it's just covered in frost from the snow and everything. And I agree, that would be very pretty. Um, and he went with his dog that way, so I turned around and went go the other way, which is what I usually do. And I went that way for a while, and I uh, I usually go down that way where there's the river on the side, and then the lake, and I go out that way where there's an area and a, a bench and a fairly open spot. But I uh, couldn't get that, didn't go that far because I would have disturbed some wildlife going there. There was the only spot on the big lake that was not frozen was right over by where I would have gone and that's where there was just a huge collection of waterfowl on the water, so I wasn't going to go bothering and disturbing them. So I did not make it that way, but I went a little bit further. I actually went to the river, which I usually never get to the river in that area. And I saw some waterfowl there. Um, Buffleheads, I think they are called. Pretty cool. Definitely different. Not, uh, not the same thing that I usually see, but still cool. Um, flickers, robin... Uh, something I, I don't know, it may have just been like a finch or a sparrow, but there was something smaller right towards the end, right as I was leaving, but boy, it was difficult with the, uh, to get a good clear shot out. The wind is very strong, very blowing. I checked the forecast this morning and it showed, um, I just looked at the, the day, the wind, I did not check the wind by hour, and it is 19 mile an hour currently. And that's a lot, it's, it's enough that it makes it really hard to hold the camera steady and Harder to stand upright and just kind of be cold and miserable. So that is it. I have to go now. It is 9.58 and I need to get home and showered and fed and turn around and get this camera set up to be streaming so I can do Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it's going to be a good time. I haven't done it in a long time. It's been a few months. We had to stop for the holiday season. Everybody got real busy. Now it's time again. And I'm really excited because I have new dice accessories. Anyway, I will continue this. This is not the end of the video. Uh, we, next thing we will talk about, because I want to continue doing stuff like this, uh, the next thing I will talk about will be the trouble that I had today with the tripod gimbal combo, and why I won't be doing that in the future, and my alternatives, and I'll be able to show you exactly what it is, but that'll be recorded later today or tomorrow, or at another point this weekend, or next weekend, or who knows? It is Monday morning now, and I am not feeling quite 100%. My nose is stuffy and also running at the same time and i'm sneezing a lot and unfortunately i have a very strong suspicion of what it is because as of yesterday morning up two floors upstairs quarantined into her bedroom is my significant other with a positive covid case why did i just hit the microphone <clears throat> So that's unfortunate, and she's quarantined up there. I tested negative. We've got at, we had some at-home testing kits, and uh, I felt fine yesterday morning. And then as the day went on, gradually downhill, I'll be cutting out a lot of my sniffing as I get through this. So Monday, I have been over the last month as I practice recording audio lines from uh, reading an audio book. I'm not doing that today. This would be too much. I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Uh, the point is I did want to get this done, though, to explain what I talked about in the video so I can get that video done and edited today, um, which was going to be the trouble I had with my tripod. So, to address the problems that I had with this tripod, it's a great tripod. I love this tripod. It's the best tripod I've ever owned so far. Um, it has a ball head, which does this. Typically, I would use this tripod and it would just have a camera directly on top of it. For example, this or even my phone, because it has a really neat feature where inside this middle column here, it actually hides away a phone mount so that wherever you go, as long as it's in there, it's ready to go. And it's, you know, it's very useful. 
the reason I got this tripod was because my old one would not do what I wanted it to do, which is hold up all of the weight that I was putting onto it. For example, the big camera. <laughs> it's a very big camera, the big lens, that's what I mean to say. Uh, it weighs a lot. And the other camera, when I would set it up and use it, it would just kind of sink down. It wouldn't hold all the weight. This one can hold all the weight, which is great. But here's the thing. It uses this plate system here on the top. So, <clears throat> it uses this plate system here on the top, which means that I have to put a plate with a screw onto the bottom of a camera, or in my instance, I tried it on this gimbal here. And I tested it at home and it worked, and it worked fine. And that's because put it on there, lock it down, unscrew here, and I did this. And I went, great, this functions, this works, so I can even, if I need to, raise it up. What I didn't test it with is all the weight on here. When I put weight on here, story changes a little bit. Now it's got a lot more weight onto it. And this doesn't quite hold up as well. You can see, even though this is locked down with just a little bit of weight, like if I'm using it as a monopod and looking around and stuff, it's starting to move from the ball head. Not what I want, so I put it down here. The problem is, is that it still comes loose and it still starts moving. So then my camera grows crooked and it pulls itself up out of the socket down here where the ball sits and it starts moving around, which is not ideal. The other problem that I have with it is that, if I can get that to lay straight, the other problem is that, as I mentioned, there's a plate, right? So we've got a plate layer that has a quarter inch screw coming up through it. The gimbal doesn't have a quarter inch screw hole. It has the next size up, three eighths of an inch. So I have to put an adapter in there, which if you can picture it, I don't have one to show you. It's a larger hole with the threads there. And then what goes into that is basically a hollowed out screw with threads on the inside of that so that it takes it from the 3 8 size down to the quarter inch size, which as you might imagine, adds one more point of resistance where you put it on there, something else can come unscrewed, which is not what I want. So that was also coming unscrewed. And even though I tightened it down as much as I could and I tried to put everything on there, that's just how physics worked, right? Every action has an opposite and equal reaction. So pushing on it one way, eventually that resistance is gonna give and it's gonna go down to here and it's gonna unscrew. So I thought maybe this will be all right. Maybe I can use it anyway because it's supposed to turn here at the gimbal. That's what this screw does, but it wasn't. It was not working that way. Putting it on the monopod, I had too much trouble with it. So ideally that's not what's supposed to happen. Also, what's really nice, the reason I use the gimbal is because I can put it in different places and lock it down. So now let's say instead of if I was monopodding it, I would, I'd be standing here looking at a bird. If it wasn't locked down, I could still have it and I still have that range of movement. But if I see a bird in a tree and I go, great, now I want to get a photo of it there. As soon as it takes off, I could be waiting five, 10 minutes until that happens. So while it is super useful that it is, I originally used this on another tripod, which would not handle the weight of it. And it would sink down when I would be out looking around and trying to set it up. This tripod is a lot sturdier. It can handle the weight. It just doesn't do well when it's got a ball head that can move. And then on top of that is a plate that is attached to an adapter where these things can move when they unscrew and whatnot attached to a gimbal, which itself can move. All of these moving parts and pieces get locked up, locked down, and eventually come loose. And it's just not ideal for that. What I should do instead is get another tripod sometime in the future that can have the ability to maybe be a monopod. I don't know, I'm still deciding. I have to look at what my budget could afford. Um, I think I would like, I know I would like to get a newer camera here. Uh, the results of this are okay, but they're not what I want them to be. And I know that I can get what I want with a better camera. It's just more expensive, one that's brand new that just came out. That's my plan. I, once I pay off my debt, I think the next thing I'll purchase will be a new still photography camera because now not only would it be great for going out and doing wildlife and taking beautiful landscape photos, of which I can use this tripod, I also will use it for work because my side income job of taking product photos will come out only better if I can get a camera that's a lot newer than the ones that I use for that purpose. So hopefully I did a good enough job explaining all of the moving pieces and why too many of them equaled into some frustration. As an alternative, what I have done in the past over the last few months since I got this tripod is just put, instead of using the gimbal, which 
as I just mentioned, all of the benefits would be super nice, but just doesn't work with this tripod. I just put the camera directly onto the ball mount here and use that. It's not unscrewing this while it's up in the air and try to do everything. It's not as ideal as having these here where I can lock it down and it's got the, the free forming and everything. It's way easier to use something like this. I would rather use something like this, but I'm gonna need a different tripod to use something like this. So for the meantime, here with everything that's there, it's good. I like it. I will continue to use this. Another problem with being sick is that I'm not as coherent, even less than normal, which I'm not as coherent normally, something I'm working on. So I've recorded this three times. It'll be a fourth time here when I redo it again to try to get everything short and sweet and all of my points across. I'm going to finish editing this and I'm going to go take a rest.